For the last 12 years, scientists, researchers and field staff have been studying the impact of rising temperatures and habitat degradation on bird species in one of the most remote and biodiverse parts of India, the forests of West Kameng district in Arunachal Pradesh. It's tempting for visitors to assume that these chilly cloud forests at 3,250 meters above sea level are unscathed by global warming and habitat degradation. The unpleasant truth is that the Himalayas are heating three times more than the global average. The team consists of Dr. Umesh Srinivasan, an ornithologist and professor at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, field staff IT Tapa, Dambar Pradhan, Dema Tamang, Mika Rai, as well as researcher Kaling Dangan. To do this work, they live deep in the forests in a single room shelter without electricity, running water, or a proper ceiling. But it's worth it for them because their research could be seminal in predicting the fate of not just birds, but other biodiversity in tropical montane forests across the world. So how exactly do you study wild birds in a forest? How are researchers able to come up with the conclusions that rising temperatures are causing these animals to move upslope and affecting their survival rates? Well, field staff are assigned nets, and through a technique called mist netting, they're able to capture birds, record data, and then release them back into the wild. Black throated sunbutton, male. Black throated sunbutton, male. Team members routinely remind us that time is of the essence in this job. The birds are never held in the nets for more than 15 minutes. And if there's even a slight chance of rain, everybody scatters to the plots where the nets are and releases these birds immediately. Back at the workstation, many birds come out of the bags. Grey-cheeked warblers, striated laughing thrushes, white-tailed robins, rusty-fronted bowings, large niltavas, and many more and the other fingers forming a sort of cage around the body hmm. but that these fingers hmm. should not touch the bird hmm. they can touch the feathers but they can't they can't touch the thorax okay. of the bird because if it touches the thorax hmm. then and you press then any pressure on the thorax will kill the bird so yeah. they're very delicate so you have to be very careful when you're taking out so what you do you put your hand inside hmm. you feel hmm. very gently hmm. for where the head is and you put your two fingers around the head, mm. put the other fingers around the thorax. Mm. Once the birds are captured, Kaling and Umesh start to record data. Some of the information they collect is the bird's weight, wingspan and tarsus measurements. They also collect fecal matter and blood samples so they can study the stress hormones in these birds. Their research has uncovered that some other low elevation birds have shifted their ranges to higher altitudes and these are the common green magpie, the long-tailed broadbill and the sultan tit. But this is not migration Umesh warns. It's a response to rising temperatures that are forcing these birds to move upwards. <laughs> 